Hey, it's Charity and welcome to my take on the History Challenge. So I've seen a bunch of Ultimate Decades challenges going around and there's also a challenge out called the History Challenge where you start in prehistoric times. And I thought they were very interesting challenges, but they try to be as historic accurate as possible and unfortunately in The Sims that's just not the case. So instead of trying to be historically accurate I'm going to do my own take on the history challenge starting in prehistoric times so I have everyone dressed appropriately sort of appropriately I mean the female outfit that I found is actually pretty good because it doesn't involve sewing uh, the male outfit looks like it has to be stitched, which is probably not likely for prehistoric times. But I did find a lot of CC, and I didn't keep all of the links for all of the CC, so if there's something in particular you want to know where I found it, I will let you know in the comments. But I'm not going to list all of this out. It just took way too much time to find, and then I had to get rid of some of it because it didn't work. So I didn't keep track of everywhere where I found it. So these tents are actually rocks. And then we have some items that were in the game, like these log couches that work. And these picnic tables are made out of stone and logs. Then we have the children's toys, which look like sharp rocks. Um, I don't know why they're pointy that's not very good but anyway the trash cans are bushes and then I found some stone cribs or bassinets for the newborns this is a high chair I have some cribs in here for infants and that was actually one of the hardest things to find I couldn't find anything made out of stone because infants are just too new and then we have a little potty if you've seen my other series you know I have this one it it is actually a toddler potty I went ahead and allowed the wooden chest just because I want to be able to put items in there and then we have the pea bushes a stone bathtub and I use the stone walls but these are more like imitation piles of rocks they're not actually fit together with mortar so that's my idea and this dollhouse is kind of just a mound of dirt, rocks, and a stick. And I have an override that allows the kids to play with sticks. And I thought this was really cute. This is a monkey bars. So it's just two trees and you go across the trees. And then we have a punching bag, which is a tree trunk. Now, I did choose Moonwood Mill. And the reason for that is because everyone is a werewolf. And the reason why I wanted to start with werewolves is because they have that faded mate mechanic. And so everyone here is uh, four females and four males. And we're going to try to find a faded mate for everyone. Or at least uh, uh, what we can get from the four different couples. And then we're going to move them out onto their own lot. We're going to have one mated pair per lot and there's five lots in Moonwood Mill and having five families is good for rotational play because if you play with seasons and each season is a week you can play a week in each household and then rotate the seasons appropriately and also in Moonwood Mill they have some kind of tunnel system the tunnel system I know it has these objects that shouldn't exist in prehistoric times but we're going to pretend they're cave entrances, not portal potties. And we're going to ignore all the set dressing. I would really like to find a Moodwood Mill that is redone with set dressing for prehistoric times. But I just don't have the ability or the time to try and figure out how to make one. And I could not find one available. So... We're going to try and cut most of that out of the videos, but we'll see how this goes. Now, these portal potties and the different portals actually lead around Moonwood Mill, and I have one in the basement. So when they learn all of the different paths, they can actually get to this one in the basement. And the basement is beneficial because it has a bar. 
And at the bar, they can make a drink to cure themselves of being a werewolf. So that's going to be one of the final phases. And they can also find a grill in here. I had a stone CC grill, but unfortunately it would not work with the simple living lot trait. So I had to just bury this grill inside of rocks and it works, but it's going to look kind of silly. And this is a cooling rack and a counter. So they can actually make food here. And I also have one of these barbecue pits. It doesn't really make sense to have cooking inside of a cave, but the reason why I did it this way is because in order to start cooking, they have to make their way through the caves. And then I also have a bookshelf here with some skill books that they will need for later skills. I want them to additionally complete this uh, collection. Um, they're not supposed to have that. Okay, there we go. I want them to eventually complete this collection. And that's also going to be one of the goals. Now I know the dance floor doesn't really look like stone, but the dance floor was the only way that I could get the Sims able to learn how to dance without having to have electronics like a radio or something. Now because this is prehistoric times, I'm going to be doing death rolls. So trigger warning if you don't like doing death rolls for including newborns, infants, toddlers, children, uh, then you should not watch this. The Ultimate Decades Challenge and the History Challenge do the same thing. So basically I have very, very high mortality rates because this is prehistoric times, but I also have the on ley line lot trait. So we will be having multiple births. So most likely we will get at least one baby to survive each time that we have twins. And then I'm not going to be doing rolls on the life stage changes like the Ultimate Decades Challenge does. So I have the Quake lot trait and the Volcano lot trait on our challenges on all of these lots. And each time there is an earthquake or a volcano eruption, we will be doing death rolls for the family that we're currently playing. We will also do a death roll at the end of each season when we change households, except for spring. Spring is the one season where we don't do any death rolls because any babies born during the spring will automatically survive. Then infants are a little bit more likely to survive. And also once they get to be an infant, you can see their traits and they might be a greater wolf blood or a dormant wolf. Now, if they have the greater wolf blood, that effectively doubles their chances of survival and the dormant wolf trait will actually cut their chances of survival in half. And the reason why I do this is because it makes traits matter. So some Sims will be more fit for survival and other Sims will be less fit for survival. In addition to the dormant wolf and greater wolf blood traits making a difference, all of the traits are divided almost equally into good and bad traits. And those make a difference in survival as well because I have this spreadsheet calculation, but they don't make as good an of an impact. So having good traits will help you a little bit and having bad traits will hurt you a little bit. But the biggest modifiers are going to be the werewolf traits from birth. Now you also have the category of alpha. The alpha wolf will have a bigger chance of survival. And if you defeat Greg at any point, you get a bigger chance of survival. The last modifier I have is if the season is winter, it cuts everyone's survival rate in half. But as you can see, if you are a young adult with a 20% mortality rate, you can roll as low as a four in winter and still survive if you have a few good traits. So most likely, if you have all the good traits, you will survive. 
If you have a couple of bad ones, then you may or may not. This person rolled a two as a young adult and had good traits and they did not survive. But even during winter, um, those that roll something like a 24 will probably still survive unless they have a lot of bad traits. So for the first step of this, we are going to start with one of our Sims, Christy Bowers, and we're going to flirt with all of the guys and see if we can get a faded mate. Now she happens to be proper, so her flirting is not really labeled as flirting. So just to be sure, I'll flirt from the guys. Oh, he's also proper. I really, is it court or attempt to swoon? I think it's one of those. Well, any sort of romantic interaction with the werewolf gives you a chance to be a fated mate, but it only gives you the chance the very first time you do it. Oh, is it cold here? It is cold. We better change our outfits. Okay, I don't think he is her fated mate, so you get to go back in the tent. What about Callahill McGregor? Now, it's important to have both the girl flirt with the guy and the guy flirt with the girl because the fated mate chance actually works both ways. You get double the chance to get a fated mate if you have them flirt from both perspectives. And I also have a phone override, which is a little book. All right, last guy. Let's see if you are his fated mate. And if this doesn't work out, we'll just go to the next girl and we'll probably switch them out at some point. Wow, you're just not getting anybody today, are you? Well, I guess Christy is just not meant to be one of our founders. Next up, we have Alicia Innes. Uh, let's see if she can flirt. They keep going back into the tents. Come on. I need you to stay out just for a little while. Okay, and now they're uncomfortable. We need to change clothes. Oh, Lamont found his faded werewolf mate. Okay, we have our first pair is going to be Alicia and Lamont. Okay, I have cheated their relationship because I really don't have time to actually develop all of these relationships since they need to just be married right away. Just hopefully no one actually rejects my marriage proposals. Okay, and then we'll quickly get them pregnant and married. So we have to do this five times for five different couples to get our starting relationships. And they have to be fated mates. So that's why I'm doing this this way instead of creating them as being married in Kaz. Okay, we have our first married couple. And the reason why I get them married, I know marriage really shouldn't exist in prehistoric times but it has game mechanic value so that they're not likely to have kids outside of their relationship when I'm playing other households all right and I have the money set pretty high but to be honest I'm not using money for anything at this point they can buy whatever they need and they have to use simple living and they can only gather things for ingredients. So the simoleons really don't matter for anything. Uh, we're not paying bills. There's no taxes. There's no feudal system right now. So for right now, we're just going to leave it with money cheats. All right, now it's time to try Cassidy Snow and see if she gets any faded mates. I'm just gonna start flirting with everyone. All right, it looks like Cassidy Snow is a no-go. Time to try Cheyenne Goss. Okay, it looks like I'm not getting any faded mates from the rest of the pairs. This is really bad luck. All right, basically what I did is I kicked out all of the guys and I added three guys, or actually, sorry, four guys and one female. So we did get one female to move out because she had a faded mate. So maybe we can have Alyssa try to flirt with the other guys before before they leave, but they'll probably leave right away. No, I don't think any of those are her fated mates. Oh, Christy got a fated mate this time, and it's Jonathan Parrish. Okay, MC Command Center can actually marry them, so that's a little bit easier. All right, so our second couple is set up at their household. I think maybe the werewolf 
baited mate doesn't work when the sim is proper for some reason because the interaction has changed a little bit and I never seem to see them get a faded mate. See, Cassidy already got her faded mate with Xavier. All right, so we're setting up our third couple and just getting them pregnant. Well, that didn't work. We have to try again. The reason why I want to do it this way instead of just with MC Command Center is MC Command Center makes it random and doesn't base it on the traditional rules for getting pregnant. All right, so now the third family is set up. Okay, I really don't like the lighting on the tents. I don't know why it's like that. Oh, one of the guys is unflirty. I'm going to have a hard time flirting with people in order to find out if they're faded mates. But that's just the way it goes. Okay, we found Landon and Alyssa. All right, Sunday is over, so we've wasted an entire day for the first family that we're going to play with, but that's just how it goes. We're going to be missing one day. All right, and now we have that family set up, so that makes four. For some reason, Ibrium is still here, so we're going to try and see if we can flirt with him, but probably not. Okay, I think everyone has flirted with him now, and no one really likes him. Okay, Cheyenne has found her faded mate, even though they're not really getting along right now. We found our last couple. Let me move all the other ones out now. All right, so they get to remain on this slot here, and we just need to get them pregnant. All right, and she's pregnant. All right, we're already starting to get a little hungry, so I think I'm going to use the bathroom really quick and then go fishing. Now, the good thing about werewolves is they can actually eat raw fish. I just don't want them to hate fishing because it's going to be important when it's not winter to be able to fish. All right, I did catch one fish for Alicia. And she's uncomfortable for some reason. Does she not like fish? Oh, she's squeamish. Oh, that's not good. She doesn't like fishing. I already found a rare werewolf one. Are you a collector or something? No, I'm not sure why she found that right away, but I'll take it. All right, the first day is over and we had a nice restful sleep. Um, we're being attacked by spiders. Now, I'm not going to do death rolls for spiders because they actually have the potential to kill you with the poison. However, if he does get poisoned, which he didn't this time, if he does get poisoned, he has to work it out himself and there will be no antidotes. Now that we're awake, we should probably go fishing for our breakfast. And we've reached level two of the fishing skill. Well, I think that Lamont is going to be able to reach fishing level 10. I do have a few goals for this generation. We have to complete all of the werewolf aspirations, complete the werewolf collection, and then get level 10 in some skills. I fished up a tablet. I did not know that you could get the werewolf artifacts by fishing. We'll stay here until we get at least two more fish for our lunch or dinner, and then we'll go back and maybe do something else. Oh, and we found the diary of Greg already. And we got spiders for the second time in a row. Well, she's pregnant. She can't die. At least not by game mechanics. Why is she running all the way over there to get attacked by the spiders? <laughs> that is so funny. Well, we're done fishing. We might as well go collect some wolfsbane and then start exploring the tunnels. Now, the tunnels are pretty easy. Actually, just pick any one of them to start. And then the first thing you have to do is continue. And it will give you three choices. Never pick find the fresh air first. Always choose one of the others. So we're going to try navigating the debris. And sometimes you'll end up with these little choices. Uh, you can ignore the howl or howl back. It doesn't really matter what you pick here. Okay, I didn't get the choice this time to search for an exit. So he actually just came out the same one. We'll just go right back in. We'll try navigating the debris again. Okay, he's lost again. Okay, this time we get a single choice or find the fresh air. Always find the fresh air because if you follow the magical melody, you probably won't get another chance to find an exit. 
and we found our first path. It's convenient that these paths are right next to the mushrooms that we need to harvest. Now we can travel to the ground level bunker, but we're going to explore the tunnels again. All right, this time we've already navigated the debris, so we want to follow the magical melody because that will allow us to find a different path. If you navigate the debris again, you'll just find the same path that you found before. All right, and then we find the fresh air and this gives us the portal potty. <laughs> and the last one we need is head towards the garlic. Okay, now we can find the fresh air and hopefully get the last link to the portal. And that's it, we have them all. So we can travel to the ground level bunker, the sewer grate, all right, we have all of the paths, but for some reason, I am not seeing the one that allows me to travel to this one. It must be bugged. All right, I figured out what the issue was. This cannot be the gray swatch. I have to use the brown swatch because that's the default one. It's so annoying. But if you do that, you get this option to travel to collective one, which is what I named the lot. And then you get to go underneath. Wow, and I need to fix the lighting, but you get to go underneath in the basement. Well, it appears I can't make mushroom steak yet, so we're going to have to go fishing. And Alicia is transforming. She's also a runt. Well, luckily we were able to purchase the will to resist, but that doesn't seem to be working. And that's over and she got transformation mastery. Now, once they get transformation mastery, what I might do is just keep them in werewolf form all the time, and then you don't have to worry about the clothes that don't really fit the time period. Hey, yeah, uh, things have been sort of crazy lately, and I need a place to stay for a while. Mind if I crash at your place for a bit? Um, I guess we could have stayovers. That's a little weird, though, and I don't know who it is yet. Oh, it's Christy Bowers, and she's pregnant. That's a little interesting. I think they are collective though, so that should be fine because they're going to be part of the same pack. Why did she leave her suitcase all the way over here? Well, that doesn't fit, so I'm just going to erase it. So we're just reading the diary of Greg while we're waiting for our fish to cook. Lamont is able to read books because he's able to access the cave. We'll work on getting Alicia down to the cave later, but right now she's just taking a nap and taking care of herself. And somehow she's chatting with Christy at the same time. Oh great, stayover guests like to have power slip llama berries. Yeah, that's not right. Although I do like my leaf plates, they look pretty good. Well, it looks like Lamont is going to be transforming. Um, okay, so my stayover guest is also transforming. And so am I. Oh, it's because it's the full moon. All right, so we're just going to have a bunch of werewolves running around for a while. And I guess Christy woke up. And Lamont is also returning to normal. Did he get transformation mastery? You broke a bunch of stuff, so maybe that's why you didn't get it. Well, they did both make it through a full moon, so there's that. And I guess Alicia decided she wanted to punch the punching bag, even though she was pregnant. Okay, Christy, stop dancing in my bathroom area. Could you please go out? Okay, Lamont learned how to make the wolf be gone cure. So that's important for later, but I don't know if we'll be able to get to curing werewolf in the first generation. So while that is good, we will continue with this werewolf initiate. And I think this is the last step that he needs. Yes, it is. Okay, so he just needs to finish reading this book and then we will change him to the collective aspiration because this family is going to be part of the collective. And we still need to get Alicia to go below and the reason why she's having so much trouble is she's actually squeamish and every time she goes into the tunnels she gets uncomfortable and i think because she's uncomfortable she also gets lost and she's only unlocked one path okay so lamont has finished his aspiration and he's going to be the emissary of the collective so we have to join the moonwood mill collective and try not to scare people while we're enraged that's actually pretty difficult and he actually needs to do this one before he can do any of his other ones 
Okay, I think you're a little bit too low level for fitness volume three. You should put that away. For some reason, I can't find Christopher, so we're just going to talk to Wolfgang for a while because we need some social. Oh, there he is. Speaking of Christopher, don't go away. Come back here. Okay, stop talking to Wolfgang. You need to talk to Christopher. All right, finally, a new tunnel path is discovered. All right, this time we need to follow the magical melody. I think that's the last one. So we also need to get to know Christopher because that's the next step is to join the Moonwood Mill Collective. And of course, she did not get a chance to find the exit. All right, now that we're a friend of the Moonwood Mill Collective, we can actually try to join as soon as we finish eating. All right, Alicia is able to travel to the Collective One lot. And we have joined the Moonwood Mill Collective. So, um, yeah, he doesn't like to be the bottom of the pack. Yeah, don't do anything stupid around Christopher, please. All right, now it's Alicia's turn to read. Okay, she's very uncomfortable and needs to throw up. Okay, Alicia is also going to be an emissary of the Collective. You need to get lunar empathy though. So let's read that diary one more time. For some reason, you didn't finish getting that. All right, so Jacob is our second friend. It's really dark out here though. We need to add some lights. Why did you wake me up? I, I'm supposedly still asleep. Why can they talk to me when I'm wolf napping? I don't get that. Go to sleep. It is really dark. I get that it's supposed to be dark outside, but I have lights on my lot because, to be honest, I'm filming. You can't film when it's completely dark outside. Okay, I have tried everything to remove these stupid umbrellas. I even made a modification to a mod to try and make it so the game will not assign umbrellas to anybody, but it just doesn't work. Okay, he does not have the umbrella user trait. It's not there. Yet he is still carrying an umbrella because he has the umbrella preference trait, which also should not be assignable to him, but for some reason is still being assigned. I give up. If anybody knows of an actual mod that works and removes the umbrellas from the game, please let me know in the comments. Okay, so Levant and Alicia are going to be jokesters. Well, that may or may not be a good thing. I always lose a lot of sims to hysteria. Okay, Levant, as much as you love dancing, I really need you to learn how to cook. Because if they have a baby that is a dormant wolf, they won't be able to eat the raw meat and the raw fish. So cooking is extremely important. Okay, now that she's learned how to make the wolf be gone cure, I can stop rereading this book over and over again. Oh, Alicia has gone into labor. Time to go up top. Unfortunately, the children won't be able to come down here because I have no way of getting them here. And we're going to have a baby. Will it be a boy? Will it be a girl? If you want to leave baby names in the comments, feel free. But I'm just going to be using random names because it seems like I don't get any suggestions for baby names or for pet names. And it's a girl. Her name will be Caitlin. Oh, and we have another girl, Gabrielle. So two babies. And I actually guessed perfectly on where to place the invisible crib for that one. I had to place at least one of them out in the open so that I could see the little uh, thing that we need to click on to have the baby. Okay, it does make their heads a little bit um, off placement. So this invisible baby mod crib is a little bit off place. I don't know why they placed it so far away from where the mother stands. Maybe they did that because they wanted more flexibility in what kind of bassinet or crib you could have. We have these overrides for the babies and it works pretty well. They have little fur outfits and the skin color is, eh, I mean, I guess it's okay. I think that the skin color is not overridden and the hair is not overridden, even though they are supposed to be. So I'm just going to let that slide. It's just the outfits that show up. And really, that's all that's important is that the outfits aren't the, those little onesies that look like they're from the modern day. And maybe I should have laundry day items. I was debating whether or not that was realistic for the Stone Age, but I think I'm going to go ahead and do it. Should we get pregnant again? Hmm, I'm not sure. 
I guess it would be safe to go ahead and get pregnant just in case something happens to Lamont because at any time he may pass away and we want to have as many children as possible before that happens. Now I did add the laundry day stuff and I hope this still works. I'm not sure if it will, but I kind of covered up the poles with these bushes like they strung some hide or something in between these two bushes to hang up clothes on. It would be nice if we could have some trees with branches that they could hang clothes on, but I really don't have the time to make a lot of CC right now. I just tried to take what was out there and this is all I could find. Time to put it to the test. Well, it looks like it works. Now if I can just hang clothes on it, it'll be fine. I had to move some things around because unfortunately, if things are right next to the fence, it seems like the Sims will ignore that there's a fence there. Like in the bathtub, they'll get out over the fence. And that just should not be possible. I also don't want people to be able to get in over the fence and then get inside of my little area unless they're allowed to. The dogs will jump the fence and jump into these bushes. And I don't get it. The fence is pretty high. They should not be able to do that. Now, the only question is, can she sleep in here? I know that the Sims have a lot of trouble sleeping when there's not a lot of space on the floor, but we're gonna try and see if she can sleep in the baby area. Okay, yes, there is enough room to sleep. Okay, time to tend to the baby. Now, unfortunately, that first try for baby did not work and if you want to know how you can tell if a try for baby worked without using a pregnancy test, the mother will have two down arrows for hunger instead of one. Oh, uh, well, that time it didn't work. She's sleeping outside. Oh, well. Oh, the bathtub being in the fenced area doesn't count as being private. Well, I might have to change these to half walls. I really didn't want to do that because unfortunately with half walls, they tend to leave plates on them and it's just annoying. Well, that's sort of better. Um, unfortunately, I had to encase this room in half walls. And in order to use this big arch, I have to have really tall half walls, which is almost like, hey, this is now a cave or a house. And I really wanted, the people who are living up top to not have a shelter except for the tents. And it seems like he's still seeing her. Why are you still seeing her? This is a half wall. You should not be seeing her there. Okay, trying again. Okay, but she's getting out of the bathtub now. Oh, okay, at least the babies wake her up even if she's sleeping outside of the enclosure. All right, well, if this doesn't count as being in a separate room, I mean, it is a separate room too. If it doesn't count as having privacy, uh, it might be because of the arch, but I'm not sure. What I might have to do is either get rid of the arch and use a regular door, which is going to annoy the heck out of me, or I can maybe make this a platform that they have to step up into. All right, let's see if they can at least get inside here. Okay, it looks like they can. Okay, you're gonna clean that. Why don't you take a bath? Just to see if you can take a bath next to her. Okay, I couldn't tell because it looked like she walked away into the tent, but anyway. Oh, she even gets nauseated when she changes a diaper? You're not gonna be a very good matriarch. Okay, let's see if he shoes her away. Although I don't think she's close enough for it to make a difference. No, it didn't look like he did. Now I do have a mod that allows family and good friends to bathe and use the restroom in front of each other without getting embarrassed. But that does not work for her because she is just an acquaintance. So she can't be in the same room when he's taking a bath. All right, time to test the clothesline. Does it work? Looks like it does, and it doesn't look that bad. I mean, it has clothespins, and it has a rope that goes across. So we just kind of have to ignore that, plus the clothes they're hanging up don't really match the era. But it, they have to be able to do laundry. Otherwise, I'm going to have the kids having disposable diapers everywhere that they have to throw in the trash and I don't think that would be very good. 
Okay, so we made a friend of Wolfgang. That's good. Should we try to challenge Christopher? <laughs> we won't win. Okay, the, the way that I'm doing the werewolf packs is that we have to take over the collective. However, you can only do it by a brawl. So that is super hard to do, even for challenging Christopher. I don't know why. Even if you have the alpha wolf ability and you have top rank werewolf, he is so hard to beat. All right, I also managed to find a mod that takes away the gloves. So now they don't wear boxing gloves. They just punch the tree with their bare fists, which makes sense for this time period. So I'm going to leave it that way. Okay, that was an earthquake. I didn't really catch that because it went by so quickly. But unfortunately, that is our first death roll opportunity for this family. I didn't expect it to happen during the first week. And we went five whole days without any incident. And now, unfortunately, we have a death roll with newborns. All right, so we're about to do the death rolls and I generate random numbers and then I, then I just paste them here. And according to the calculations, we get an outcome of died or survived. And we have Alicia, Lamont, Caitlin, and Gabrielle. So uh, the, the rolls that are currently there were just a number left over from my testing. So those don't count. We're going to do a roll now, though. Oh, and the only person we lost was Alicia. So the infants both, or the newborns, sorry, they're newborns, they both survived. That is shocking because anything lower than a 45, basically, they don't survive. And we got a 52 and an 88. So Lamont survives and the two newborns. But unfortunately, we lost Alicia. And since she's the mother and the babies have to be breastfed, um, that's going to be a problem because I'm not allowing bottle feeding. And so what we're going to do since they are part of the collective pack is they can, since they lost the matriarch, they can move in with the other collective family. And what that's going to do is that those two families will merge. And then once one of the children gets to be an adult, we'll try and find a mate for them to move into the other collective lot because Lamont cannot have another mate. Once the mate dies, that's it. And unfortunately, he cannot re-find another true mate because it only gives you one. Even if your mate is dead, you can't find another one. They mate for life. So basically, Lamont, Caitlin, and Gabrielle will move in with the other family now. Okay, so we have moved Lamont into the Bauer household. And if you remember, she actually came to visit. So Christy did know the other female werewolf whose name I have already forgotten. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, there's a lot of names and I haven't really chosen any of them. So it's going to be hard for me to keep them straight. I'm just randomly picking names because picking names that I care about for this many Sims is going to be difficult. So anyway, I did manually give him all of these sadness buffs. So he will be sad for a little while. However, I just deleted the sim instead of actually killing them outright because one, I don't want any ghosts or tombstones in this game. Also, when the little babies age up to infants or toddlers, I can't remember which now that they have infants in the game, and their parent died when they were a newborn, they will get a sad buff, which... That doesn't make sense. They didn't know their parent. So I guess they realized that they have a parent that's not there. 
it, it doesn't make sense for them to get a sad buff. So I basically deleted her. She won't be in the family tree, which is kind of a shame. But to be honest, there's going to be a lot of death in this game. So we're not going to worry too much about family trees. So Christy has actually not had her babies yet, even though she was the second family to get pregnant for whatever reason, I guess because she was a stayover guest, her pregnancy did not birth the babies yet, even though all of the other families have. And I have the aging turned off for them. So they will remain newborns until we get to their family. But we're going to play this family next anyway, because this is the second collective family. And we're just going to play out the last remaining time from Friday and Saturday. And then next time we pick up the series, we will start with this family again. Oh, unfortunately, she can only bottle feed. I thought that she could breastfeed them even though, okay, I might have to change the relationship so that she can breastfeed the babies. I could have sworn that it actually made it so that any female could breastfeed the babies whether or not they were the mother but maybe i am thinking of something else actually i don't think i can change the relationships since these babies are objects i will be able to change it when they're infants though oh i thought i got rid of your umbrella great okay it is their birthday so maybe i should just go ahead and age them up to infant and Gabrielle is wiggly. Hello, Gabrielle. And Caitlin is cautious. Yeah, that was the issue. She has to be the mother in order to breastfeed them, even as an infant. I could have sworn that it wasn't like that, but maybe I'm just remembering incorrectly. And of course she peed her pants because I couldn't feed the kid quick enough and put him to bed before she had to pee too badly. Stop fussing, Caitlin. I'm trying to feed you. Okay, Christopher actually came over to give Lamont a gift. And I think that he's consoling him about his mate dying. So we're going to go with that. It's actually important that Christopher and the rest of the family are friends since he's the current pack leader. So we're going to try and introduce ourselves and then go take a bath. Oh, Lamont is now active. That's a good trait. All right, it's time for Jonathan to learn the tunnels. And Caitlin lifted her head. Well, Christy has gone into labor. Let's see if we can take care of these infants really quick and put them to bed. And then we can try delivering the new babies. Okay, Christy had a boy and his name is going to be Caden and a girl named Isis. So we have two babies. Looks like we got a dark baby and the light baby. Well, it looks like Jonathan is about to rampage. Do we have regain control? Probably not. No, all we can do is howl. And he's not going to get the transformation mastery down here because he always destroys something. Well, maybe Lamont can regain control. Can you? No, I'm just going to let you two rampage down here. Can Christy regain control? Because she's got to watch the babies. No. Okay, well, sorry kiddos, you're just going to have to fend for yourselves. She can breastfeed the infants, well, sorry, she can breastfeed the newborns, but she cannot feed the infants, so it looks like they're pretty full anyway, so it should be fine. Um, well, Caitlin is a little hungry, but she'll be fine, she won't be taken away. And eventually Christy will be able to feed her again. So this is the end of the first week for this challenge. And next week we will actually be back with the same family. So this is Charity. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.